Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled Flight Test Tales from the Dark Side Buzzing Bakersfield, California Legally, the T 38 as an infrared target. Now, this was a test mission. We uh, were using an F 15 captive carrying an AIM 9L, which is a new missile that was looking at moving heat sources. I was flying in a T 38, I was in the back seat. Dick Scobie, the, who later became the Challenger commander, was in the front seat. And uh, we were to function as an infrared target. Now, if you want to know anything about the golden age of flight testing, if you're not familiar with it, read any of Bob Hoover's or Chuck Yeager's books. They will describe flight testing back in the 40s or 50s, and it is really amazing. Now, being a member of the Society of Experimental Test Pilots, I had the great honor and opportunity to rub elbows with a lot of the really greats of aviation. Um, there were a lot of us, you know, young captains who were very uh, uh, wide-eyed just listening to these guys' stories. Um, I'd sat down at social events and I had scotch with Bob Hoover. I actually, you could kind of say I, I uh, worked with uh, or worked for General Yeager very, very briefly. When General Stafford, who was the center commander, would go on vacation, General Yeager would come in for the daily briefing. And as officer in charge of current operations, um, there would be a three o'clock daily briefing where everybody would talk about anything that happened of significance that day um, on the base at Edwards. And my thing was to talk about anything in flight test activities that uh, happened during the day. So I got a chance to... Uh, uh, to interact with him a little bit, which is quite interesting. But there were many legends around, and they had just amazing stories and did amazing things and stuff that, of course, uh, you couldn't do today. And this was back in the mid to late 70s. And I one time commented uh, to one of these individuals that, uh, you know, the good old days are gone. And he looked at me and said, well, mark my words. What you're living through right now, you will remember as the good old days. And you will be amazed at how things change in the decades later. And they were right. Now, my upbringing was like most pilots. I uh, started out in the training command. I mean, we're talking strict rules. You follow or you get in uh, serious trouble. And I also spent 36 years as an airline pilot. And I was a line check airman in the uh, 727, the Airbus, and the 777. So, I know how to follow rules. I followed rules. I gave check rides. I interfaced with the FAA. You did things by the book. And I got the Wright Brothers certificate, and I think it's amazing that Orville and Wilbur actually signed this. I think that's pretty amazing. But uh, um, I, often, I, I said to the FAA uh, gentleman when he presented it to me, I said, you didn't find everything about me. And technically, I've done nothing wrong, okay? This is a test card. It wasn't the test card of this mission. Um, I don't have it anymore, but this, this is a test card, and it's signed off by all the higher-ups, and the parameters of the test conditions are set. And essentially, you are following an order, and this is the way you fly the aircraft, and if there are certain, what you might call, um, what could be considered FAR violations, um, then you are technically covered. Now, if you screw up in the military, uh, there are no NASA reports and you wished you were treated as well as how, uh, the FAA might treat you and they don't treat you very well. But we had the R2508 complex, which is the vast amount of airspace around Edwards. And you could do just about anything in here. Uh, we had supersonic corridors, certain supersonic corridors, but sometimes there were supersonic flights that were outside of the corridors, and that just kind of happened as long as you were kind of clear of any place that might have a problem. Now, in this test mission, the Blue Arrow is Edwards Air Force Base. You can see the R-2508. This is a, a current screenshot, and um, under the orange arrow is Bakersfield, and the airspace is essentially the same. Now here you see a little enlarged view. The blue arrow points to the boundary of the MOA. 
the military operating area where we could do, you know, a lot of things and not get in trouble. The orange arrow points to Bakersfield, which is outside of the uh, airspace. Now, like I said, I was flying with uh, Dick Scobie. I was by far the junior guy in this whole mission. Uh, Major B was flying the F-15, and he is the definition of a steely-eyed fighter test pilot. Um, yeah. And Dick, of course, extremely experienced pilot at the time. This is shortly, very shortly before we were selected to go to NASA as a shuttle astronaut. Now, our mission was to be an infrared target. The AIM-9L was a missile that would pick up moving heat sources. Before this, if you wanted to defeat an infrared missile, what you did was you either aimed the aircraft towards the sun and the missile would be lost in the sun, or you went down over a lot of heat sources. And it would pick out the strongest heat source, or it, uh, at, at worst, it would just not follow you because there were so many heat sources and it would, it would lock onto another one and you could evade it that way. Well, the advantage of the AIM-9L was that it would find that moving heat source. So, okay, no, no, he didn't fire the missile at us. That would be very bad. Um, I've been targets before, but it was always when somebody wasn't firing at us. I've, I've chased live fire missions, which are really cool. The uh, Mavericks off the F-16 were probably the most fun to do. Now, as I said, this is a captive carry mission. You keep the missile on the airplane and you get data from the seeker head looking at the target and you record this and then you analyze it to see if you got the results that uh, you wanted to get. So he's up above us and we're going out over Bakersfield and they want us low. So we start out with the test points. We're down at 500 feet and they want us to do 500 knots. Some of the settings were in 100% power, known as full military power. Other ones were in afterburner and they wanted us to make high G turns like we would be trying to evade a missile and using the, uh, the cover of the infrared targets on the ground uh, to hide us. So they wanted us to go, the test cards wanted us to go over the city. So we did that. And then over residential areas, and I remember looking down and seeing a guy mow his yard, and we're making these turns in burner and that, and we're down low, we're going fast. It's kind of hazy. And I'm thinking, we're down here with the Cessnas doing this. And I wasn't, wasn't the most comfortable with that, but this was the test mission and I'm going along for the ride. So, uh, we did those various test points and then we recovered, uh, back to Edwards, got the data they wanted, got the moving heat source data they wanted for this brand new missile they were evaluating. And we went back, never heard a thing about it, but the, um, Every once in a while, there'd be a complaint that would come in and often come in to the command post. And sometimes I would, I would get them, but they didn't seem to ever trickle down to anybody. And, you know, when I, when I talked about kind of, you know, FAR violations, well, there's a lot of strange things like, you know, it's 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Well, unless there's a flight manual restriction. So a lot of the aircraft, like for the, the T-38, we flew at 300 knots and some of the other aircraft, um, you know, uh, were at much higher speeds, but it was part of the operational uh, provisions of the aircraft and it needed to be operated at uh, high speeds. The SR-71 is probably a, a good example of that. But anyway, this was a story about a test mission we did 45 years ago that thinking about it, I still cringe just a little bit. I doubt if you could do it today. I would really not want to do it today because of the dangers of small aircraft and that. Um, and I'm sure there'd be a lot more complaints, but they needed to get the test data. This was the test mission. It was approved and we did it. Thanks for watching.